Hello there, my name is Makars and welcome to BVS Mod 1.1 changelog video. Um, this was a pretty huge update, as you can see probably by the length of the video, there are a lot of features to cover and probably chapters also pretty dense here. So yeah, let's not waste time and let's get into the features. The first feature I want to show you in this update is mob form. So what it does, it basically allows you to use any of the entities or mobs within Minecraft as uh, forms. So example, here I have a pig, I can change the skin, I can change the scale, however, I cannot pose these characters. There is no guarantee that animations would work and there are no special abilities, just the appearance. However, there is a big list, it could even work with uh, mod entities, however, some entities could crash or not work correctly, so sadly I can't guarantee anything. So example with no guarantee of animations, for example, rabbit. If I go and morph myself into a rabbit, then as you can see, if I even jump around, there are no animations. And if I go and spawn a rabbit and hit it, you can see that the legs are actually moving when the rabbit is jumping. There is no guarantee for animation, so because some of these mobs are using AI in order to, to trigger specific animations. So yeah, only the ones that the user the default like walking cycles and like he's saying that will work correctly so last thing i want to show about the mob form is that yeah. if i go and create yeah. for example this little villager like i cannot just simply create it or find it in the list here it's uh, the villager the baby villager is basically a special configuration of the nbt or the villager of mob form so what i have to do is i have to look at the Entity and then click this button and then I would become baby villager Here and this example works same way with zombies for example If I go and switch to easy I hit I press quickly B because I be really difficult to aim on the zombie again I click on the create a form from mob you're currently looking at and then I became a, a baby zombie same works uh, with Endermen that are holding blocks and stuff like that. Uh, we can generate a command of Endermen with a block and then look at it, B, and then create a form. In this way, you can create a custom form from the entity you're look, looking at. So yeah, this is pretty cool. However, it's not a solution to all your problems. If you need to actually animate these guys, you would have to take a model somewhere or make yourself and then uh, actually like it is model. Next we have on the list is Mike Creeper's bendable models. So now with BBS mod 1.1 you have these player Alex Benz and Steve Benz. So what these guys have they look exactly the same like the player model however they have elbows, knees and also the lower torso. So this way you can like rotate and you can have like extra details to your animation for example here that and then move the body like this this way you can have like extra bends while it's not the same way as the uh, emoticons i think it's a pretty good start big shout out to michael creeper for allowing using these models in the vs mod besides bendable models now we also have ice rigs directly added to bbs mod so here i have a basic setup with a uh, ice rig to steve model and the bendable model. So here I can go, uh, press F8 to hide the axis. You can select different presets that there are in this model and they would uh, correctly apply over here. You can change skins and stuff like that. But in order to actually create these skins, you should watch the tutorial shown over here in order to actually correctly get these guys to work with the model. But yes, if you go to pick form, you can see that these guys are uh, situated over here. Finally, for the model system, there is this cool feature commissioned by Favor My Saber, which is OBJ and shape keys. So here I have model which seems to be like mm, it's normal one. However, it's not really normal. So what it does basically is uh, it has shape keys. It's a ice rig that has shape keys applied to the eyebrows and the eyelids. So let me demonstrate to you. If I go and change these values, 
you'd see there is a smooth bend to these. It's due to the way shape keys were configured for this one. So let's try right B. And now I can have like expression like this. I can change the pose here independently from the shape keys. For example, if I had like some uh, preset that I liked, for example, I would stop again this sad pose. So I'm going to sell right bottom one and the left bottom one. And then I call it sad, save it. It will be a separate thing here. So, so I'm going to reset both of these. Said angry and then sad and then it actually gonna like create could have a completely different combination of these ones. And the cool thing about this them having separately is because check this out. If I go to films, I have this model, so I can have for eyes, let's say like a different animation, and then I could animate shape keys differently or independently from the pose. So this way, as you can see, it's not... This way you can like have control over the shape keys. And why this is great is, for example, if you made a mouth rig with uh, shape keys, that means that you can separately animate pose and then the mouth animation. The interpolations also affect the shape keys over here. Mm, it's not really visible, let's make them... Yeah, but there is a difference, but it's very not noticeable. So, beside that, uh, well, <laughs> I don't think I need to explain that this is an OBG model. So if I go here, pick this model, pick and then open models folder, you would see that it's an OBJ model. So go into the model with player with ice 3.1. The way it works is that I have a block bench model over here. It looks like this. Uh, the corners over here are part of the model. However, the, the eyebrows themselves and eyelids are not part of the model itself. So because they're empty, they're called this way. Uh, and the, the actual uh, model over here these OBJs are called exactly the same way over here. I lead RT, or I lead LB, I lead RB, I lead LT, and they're positioned in the same place where these guys are. So basically, I exported first this model as OBJ, and then I did some editing. If I go and, for example, I'm gonna create a new one, and for the shapes over here, they have different OBJs that are exported based upon base obj so if i go here and shapes and import so take the path and then import wavefront here and if i import this model you can see that only one of these guys is actually bended so all of these parts are independently bended for each of these obj models and they're exported separately, and that's what makes uh, them work as shape keys. I would make a separate tutorial independently from this uh, changelog video. So yeah, this is epic. One thing worth mentioning though, is that due to the way newer versions of Minecraft work, at the moment there is no optimization to the way OBJ models or, or any high poly models are rendered, so Please keep the vertex count of the models to really low. I think this model doesn't have too many vertices. I think it's like under 200 or under 500, something like so. This, because of that, it doesn't uh, lag as much, even though it's a sphere. So yeah, this is a very epic feature. Now let's talk about posing features. So the first feature I want to show you is that whenever you create a pose keyframe you would be able now to see the axis, which would allow you to basically help you navigate with the posing tools. So for example, here you have the green one, which allows you to move, for example, the anchor along the green axis. So for example, if I would change the anchor, create like this, and then pick another pose, you would see that the green here is going in this direction. Even if you rotate, it's gonna still show you where the direction to move here. However, 
the same thing works with transform keyframe. So now you can see the transform. The rotation would rotate it. The scale would also make it bigger. So in some cases, whenever you have the axis and the model is too small, you can change the scale of the axis over here. Now you can see it's now became smaller. Next useful pose feature is the local global translation mode. So at the moment, if you, for example, had some object over here, then you and you wanted to basically like move the arm so it'd be closer to that place, you probably would have to first move on Z axis, then on Y, then on X, and so on. Or this is very tedious. So instead of what you can do is, for example, rotate the arm over the direction you want the arm to be, then you switch to the local mode, and then you just move it along the local axis. This makes it much easier to move the object over to the place you want it with the rotation you need, and then you just move along the local axis. Switch back to the global axis, you just press here, or you can always do that same in the context menu to toggle between local and global translation modes. You might also notice that there is tinting and lighting options now for every bone. So you can change the lighting for every part of these. And then they will be lit by the torchlight, even though they are not in the torchlight. So for them here you can see that it actually does animate from dark to light. Same goes about tinting, for example, if I go and change the body, for example, from white to green, because I also go from white to green. Interpolations also affect these properties. So yeah, that's pretty nice, and this was already present in blockbuster mode, and so I just uh, implemented it here in the VS mode. Let's say we have these keyframes, and I want to, for example, adjust the scale over here for all of them, and also I want to, for example, move upward a little bit for all of them. In previous version, you have to go and edit them manually, each one of them. However, in this new version, you can just, for example, take, then adjust the scale, two, and now this one also, and this one, they were all light relatively. So it was 1.5 and 1, and now it's 2.5 and 2 again. So same goes here, for example, I go back, and if I want to bring it up a little bit, for example, like like this and now all of these would be also be applied relatively and you can do this with rotation for example if i go and rotate this by 50 degrees on x axis these would also receive relative so if you have like poses that are also relative so for example if i have anchor now like say each one of the head if i go take all of them pick head and for example like change it to 107.5 then the head would also be relatively applied to all of these keyframes which is really useful instead of editing all of these individually finally i want to show you some pose and keyframe tools that were introduced in bbs mod 1.1 and this feature is pretty cool it basically allows you to take animation to post keyframes you have here a list of block bench animations you pick a mode breakdance, for example, I have breakdance animation, you click generate. And all of the animation keyframes within block range would be actually transformed into poses keyframes. This one is a pretty good example. So I can change the interpolation to Hermite and it's actually gonna look exactly like in block range. However, for example, if you have an animation that has more lying in it, it's not gonna look exactly the same way. So what you can do is uh, you can disable on the keyframes, then you can click on generate and it's actually going to generate keyframes for every step, so for every tick here. So then, then it's going to look exactly the same for Molang based animations, but it's not going to be really editable. You can still sync it, for example. So going back to the animation with breakdance and on the keyframes, let's say you think this animation is too fast. Then you, what you can do is you can press V and then drag it like this. This would upscale the animation and this would appear slower. However, downscaling the animation this way could cause some keyframes 
to collapse and uh, this would cause unintended consequences here you can see it but for example if i go like this you would see it's not it doesn't look great it's due to the limitation of the atx being whole steps i have plans for upcoming updates to ch change it so it'd be partial but the moment it's not really clear how it would work very well so um beside that let's say this is now slower as you want it to be but you also want to duplicate throughout the whole timeline what you can do here is uh first you're gonna measure here so there's different than five ticks what you can do is you're gonna grab these keyframes and then you're gonna zoom out when you want to see the thing then you press b and now you'll be able to duplicate these keyframes however if you're just gonna do that there will be only a difference in one tick from the previous animation so what you're gonna do we measured those five ticks so i'm gonna zoom out i'm gonna press b i'm gonna mouse wheel up one two three four because now there's a five ticks difference and i'm gonna just duplicate it like that and now it's gonna repeat as it's supposed to be you see there is no difference in the animation it's actually looped perfectly so yeah these are the tools that i want to show you but finally there's also another thing is that you can use square brackets to jump between keyframes this is very useful if you want for example like to edit certain body part quickly adjust it then you know, pick it again and then again and this makes it much easier to like jump between keyframes instead of like pressing here then move the cursor here and so on you can rebind these in your settings ui keybinds if you want to now let's talk about camera features the first feature i want to show you is camera snapping so let's say you have an angle clip then you would uh, like increase the fov and then you want to move it over here usually you would have to like move over here then move over here and precisely over like that it takes some time which is not really effective so with camera snapping you can just move over here and it would actually snap in place which is very convenient for example if i want and i need to move this clip specifically so to touch this corner instead of actually like precisely we can look and then with a precision go and like grab the clip you can just like from over here and just snap to that point this is very useful if you don't need it to snap or you want to avoid for example there's like some situation when it could like be a little bit buggy or jump around you can hold alt and then just move it in the place you want it and it would actually disable snapping and even collision between clips here i have an angle clip that has a simple envelope with a quadratic in and out for pre and post interpolations which is also 10 takes long for fade in and fade out uh, let's say I want to move the fade in fade out over here. So what I have to do here is like I have to measure so it's three ticks here and then I also like adjust property this is 22 so the minus 3 is gonna be 19. This could be time consuming so instead I added a feature that allows you to basically move the cursor where I want it to be fade in or fade out above fade out I want to set it over here I press period and it's actually gonna move the fade out over here same with uh, fade in with a comma so this way i can change the fade in and fade out without actually having to adjust the numbers which is very convenient for simple envelope mode the next feature i want to show you is a created orbit cavern mode so here i have a scene where the character walks into the scene and then walks away now i can change the camera mode to orbit and you would see that the camera actually gonna follow the character you can go and use WSD and the shift and space movement to move the camera and then it would still stick to the same point relative to the character in the orbit mode. So if I go and for example change the angle over here, still gonna move over here. In comparison to the previous orbit mode, this new update also supports like transformations relative with the transform and pose keyframes so if you change it this way it would actually also follow the anchor group the bone here 
If you don't have anchor specifically group, it would pick the first top group in the model and stick with to that. Or if you have no bones at all, which shouldn't be possible, but for certain forms it is, you just stick to the bottom of the character. So yeah, this is very useful. However, there are some cases where you have like, oh, well, I have to move around, but then I have to move here. As you can see, it's very difficult to make this kind of like circle or, or orbital movement. So what you can do is hold the button, hold middle mouse button, and then it would actually move around around the character. The further away you are from the camera, this is gonna be the distance. So you just move with WSD. Or yeah. the thing is, if for example, if you have like an angle like this, it's not gonna actually center around some point uh, somewhere in the middle. What we're gonna do is actually center to the middle and then you'll be able to basically orbit around the character. So yeah, this is very useful for when you have like specific limb you want to attach to the camera from over here and then you want to animate it. Then you can you'll just be able to animate it quite easily. And uh, you have to use, for example, free camera, then move here, and then, well, it doesn't stick to the camera, so you have to go first here, you edit this one, here, edit here. So yeah, this orbit mode is so much more convenient and uh, time-saving, in my opinion. Finally, for the camera features, I want to show you two new clips that were added in this update. The first one is Striker Clip, which was added by Cryfy, who was a long-time contributor and maintainer for Blockbuster and my other mods since like 2020. So what it does, it allows you to pick the target, like a replay, and then an attachment which could be like a body part, a bone, etc. So here I'm gonna pick head, I'm gonna rotate 180 degrees, and then I'm gonna move the camera away. Something like this. Like that. Alright, now if I'm gonna play the camera, you would see that the camera actually moves around with the head. If I'm gonna go here and animate the pose, for example, I'm gonna change the anchor, I'm gonna downscale it a bit, I'm gonna change the head, for example, 180 roll, the camera is still gonna follow the head transformation, which is really cool. So, with this one, you can, for example, have some selfie stick or body cam shots that allow you to see from the POV of the police officer or something like that. So yeah, uh, that's a really cool feature for these kind of camera shots. The second cool clip is uh, called Curve, which allows you to basically take some curves and then animate them. At the moment there's only one is Sun Rotation, you know what it does? It allows you, for example, to set a keyframe here, and say at the end, keyframe here. And what it does, it's too long, and what it does, it actually animates the sun rotation. So if I'm gonna change here to 11150, then you would see that the, that's actually not visible very well. Then you'd see that the, actually the time changes, and you can control it with keyframes as much as you'd like to. For example, if I'm gonna change here with Hermite, then actually I can just control the sun rotation with these keyframes. At the moment it's only sun rotation and uh, in the plans I want to use this clip for shader curves, but at the moment it's just the sun rotation. So yes, these are two cool features you can use with camera. Now let's talk about miscellaneous features added in BBS mod 1.1. So here I am in the world and I have no cheats enabled. So as you can see, I cannot... Oh, maybe I can. Let's change to creator. But let's imagine that we cannot and I'm gonna disable cheats. So, oh no, I cannot change my game mode to creative. So what you can do is uh, execute command BBS cheats true. And now I will be able to change creative mode and fly around in the world. Oh, what's there? Uh, I don't know. But basically, yes, that's it. And if you want to disable cheats back, you can just change true to false 
and now I no longer can change to creative or even survival. But I cannot use the cool commands. This is pretty useful if you don't know that the map and has cheats disabled. And without having to go to MBT Explorer, you can just enable cheats with BS cheats trip. Next, we have a pretty cool useful feature that allows you to quickly find textures in the texture editor. So let's say I have this hairbrine skin, stuff like that, and then oh no, I have to find a skin. I know I have a skin somewhere in my textures, which is like, I think it's called icons.png. So here, by pressing Ctrl F, I can find a texture from all of these, which is like a found in BBS mod. Then I can like go here, like, like this one or something like that. So it was, I think, Fisherman. And I click on it and then it's actually gonna jump to the correct folder and select the correct skin. This is very useful if you have like a ton of skins and you know exact file name so you can find it over here. Very useful stuff. In addition to Ctrl F to find all the skins, there is also another cool feature related to Texture Picker. You can go here and insert the URL and it's actually gonna download the texture. So the cool thing about this implementation is actually better than the implementation in Blockbuster mode. So the difference is that it, if I remember correctly, Imgur and Discord links were broken in the Blockbuster mode, however here it actually works. Then beside that, whenever you type in the URL, it actually downloads the skin to, or like basically texture to the cache. So here, if I go URL cache, you would see that here is the skin. And there's actually like a cache file over here. So, um, that's really useful because it means that even if the link is not gonna be available anymore, you can still use it because it's downloaded locally. And it's actually gonna load fast because you don't have to download it again. Here I have a simple scene with two actors jumping around. But are there actually just two actors? If I go to replace, you would see that there is also a third actor. So, but where is the actor is? Well, you can take these uh, values from the coordinates x, y, z and form a tp command from that. Or there is an easier way to do that in BBS mod 1.1. What you're gonna do, you're gonna move the cursor forward to the beginning and then you press Y. And I'll get teleported where this actor is. It would even teleport not only to the place, but also apply the angles which this actor has. So, if I go back, for example, to this character, I press Y and then I am here where I'm supposed to be. Now I can re record this action, for example to be like different or something like that. This is very useful if you can't find the action and you want to start actually, or you want to actually start recording from this specific tick. Uh, one thing worth mentioning is that if you, for example, gonna move here and you're gonna teleport here, if you start recording it right out, it's not actually gonna start the recording from the tick you picked. It's gonna start from the beginning until it's gonna be important in the future, but I don't know when exactly. Last but not least, introducing serve to client asset synchronization. This feature was commissioned by Checkpoint and it's really cool. Let me just show you how it works. So here I am in the single player world. I have following models over here. And if I go save and quit to the title screen, multiplayer and join local host server, you could see I spawn here. And then, if I go to another player, I press B, and then I would have a completely different set of models. Because these models are actually stored on the server. If I, for example, go over here and show run BBS mod server, config BBS mod assets models, these are the models over here. But if I go over here and I open models, be actually a different folder which is downloaded from the server so bbs server dev models so the way it works is that you have to specify for the server number this uh, player is op config set tweaks server id and then you specify some uh, server id basically in this case it was df 
but it could be anything else. So basically what it does, it uh, provides the folder on the clients or like the ID that is going to be used by the server to transmit the like the assets to. So it was dev and I'm going I'm to change over here. So now, as you can see, the models over here. So if I go here in the DBS asset models, no, it's not here. It's run server, assets, models, and then uh, yes, here. And if I go and take like another model, for example, I have a bookshelf folder. If I go here and I go uh, DBS server assets, yes, the shelf is now over here. Additionally, you can also set one player to be an asset manager with DBS server asset manager. For example, this player is uh, 532, I think, because if 727 join, then uh, yes. This way, this means, for example, if I close this folder, if I go to the dashboard, first of six models, let's pay a close attention to this window because the model will appear here. And if I go and like put another model here, so here I'm gonna paste it, a chair had appeared. So yeah, this model, this mechanism allow you to synchronize the model. It seems it appears that I can't uh, control these. Uh, I cannot delete, but I can add new models over here. So if I like add maybe one more model, like I don't know, like bedside drawer, it's gonna be also synchronized across all players, even over here. And only one player can be an asset manager, so keep that in mind. Then make sure also to be acknowledged that whenever you have the model sync from the client to the server, they're actually uh, like stored in the raw format, so it doesn't mean that there is there is no encryption here whatsoever, so people can technically take and uh, steal your models. So don't use that for public servers, it's only designed to be used for like private production servers. So this is a very epic feature and big shout out to Checkpoint for commissioning this feature. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I really hope that it will be much more pleasant to work with this new update, and I hope that the horizons are expanded. If you'd like to support my work, feel free to donate on Patreon, watch my videos, or share BBS mode. Anything helps. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye!